It's been almost 20 years since we last lost astronauts in space. That's the biggest and proudest effort of the space industry. However, once again, we're in a dangerous situation. Two weeks ago, a Soyuz spacecraft docked to the ISS and sprang a coolant leak. This is one of the two vehicles used to get humans to and from the ISS and serves as a lifeboat in case personnel are required to evacuate the station rapidly. While the leak doesn't place the ISS or the crew in danger, it cuts the margin for error and could potentially interfere with future crew rotation. There must definitely be a solution, but a rescue Soyuz craft could only come in February at the earliest. As the last way, NASA's considering using SpaceX Dragon to rescue the crew of the damaged Soyuz. So can SpaceX's trampoline save the Soyuz crew? How does Russia react to this plan? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. NASA might use a SpaceX spacecraft to rescue three space station crew members depending on a leaky Soyuz to get home, a report suggests. The Soyuz spacecraft at the ISS suffered a severe coolant leak December 15th, and a decision about whether it's safe to send the crew back to Earth on it will come in January, Russia says. If a rescue Soyuz is needed, it can only get there in February, two or three weeks before the normal changeover in March. As a result, NASA is apparently considering using SpaceX, the company currently flying astronauts into space from American soil, as a backup if these options don't work out. We've asked SpaceX a few questions on their capability to return additional crew members on Dragon if necessary, but that's not our prime focus at this time, NASA spokesperson Sandra Jones said in a statement to Reuters that was published Wednesday, December 28th. However, NASA didn't clarify what options with SpaceX might be possible, such as whether the company could launch a backup Crew Dragon spacecraft to pick up the crew or add more seats to the existing Dragon called Endeavor that's docked at the space station. All seats on Endeavor are nominally full as it's supposed to bear home Crew 5 in early 2023, including NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Casada. Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata, and Ross Cosmos cosmonaut Anna Kakina. The crew that was using the affected Soyuz called MS-22 includes Russian cosmonaut Sergei Propovev and Dmitry Patelin, and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, and each of those came to space in a Russian Sokol spacesuit. Normally, SpaceX only launches crew members who've been fitted for a custom-made SpaceX spacesuit. How this issue would be overcome was also not addressed. Well, finding what caused the leak could factor into decisions about the best way to return the crew members. A meteoroid, a strike from a piece of space debris, or a hardware failure on the Soyuz capsule itself are three possible causes of the leak that NASA and Roscosmos are investigating. A hardware malfunction could raise additional questions for Roscosmos about the integrity of other Soyuz vehicles, such as the one it might send for the crew's rescue, said Mike Sufferandini, who led NASA's ISS program for a decade up until 2015. I can assure you that's something they're looking at to see what's back there and whether there's a concern for it, he said. The thing about the Russians is they're really good at not talking about what they're doing, but they're very thorough. Roscosmos chief Yuri Borisov had previously said engineers would decide by Tuesday how to return the crew to Earth, but the agency said that day it would make a decision in January. NASA had previously said the capsule's temperatures remain within acceptable limit, with its crew compartment currently being vented with airflow allowed through an open hatch to the ISS. Sergei Krikalev, Russia's chief of crewed space program, told reporters last week the temp would rise rapidly if the hatch were closed. So NASA and Roscosmos are primarily focusing on determining the leak's cause, Jones said, as well as the health of MS-22, which is also meant to serve as the three-man crew lifeboat in case an emergency on the station requires evacuation. A recent meteor shower initially seemed to raise the odds of a micro-meteoroid strike as the culprit, but the leak was facing the wrong way for that to be the case. NASA's ISS program manager Joel Maltobano said last week, though a space rock could have come from another direction. And if a piece of space debris is to blame, it could fuel concerns of an increasingly messy orbital environment and raise questions about whether such vital equipment like the spacecraft's coolant line should have been protected by debris shielding as other parts of the MS-22 spacecraft are. 
We're not shielded against everything throughout the space station, Suffredini said. We can't shield against everything. In the meantime, fortunately, things are returning to normal on the ISS, with a spacewalk in progress for installing a solar panel upgrade by astronauts Frank Rubio and Josh Casada. Despite their smaller size, each of the new arrays generate about the same amount of electricity as each of the station's existing solar panels. The International Space Station has eight power channels, each fed with electrical power generated from one solar array wing that extends from the station's truss backbone. The new solar array deployed Thursday will produce electricity for the space station's 4A power channel. The original solar panels were launched on four space shuttle missions between 2000 and 2009. As expected, the efficiency of the station's original solar arrays has degraded over time. NASA's upgrading the space station's power system with the new rollout solar arrays at a cost of $103 million, which will partially cover six of the station's eight original solar panels. When all six IROSA units are deployed on the station, the power system will be capable of generating 215 kilowatts of electricity to support at least another decade of science operations. That's a 30% increase in power generation capability. The enhancement would also accommodate new commercial modules planned to launch into the space station. The first pair of new rollout solar arrays launched to the space station last year and were installed over the station's oldest set of original solar panels on the P6 truss section that's located to the far left end of the outpost power truss. Two more IROSA units are slated to launch on SpaceX resupply missions next year. The new solar arrays were supplied to NASA by Boeing, Redwire, and a team of subcontractors. Once Rubio and Casada finish their work, they'll head back to the Quest module, repressurize the airlock compartment, and wrap up the spacewalk at 3.27 p.m. Eastern, and the excursion lasted seven hours and eight minutes. The spacewalk on Thursday was the third in the careers of Casada and Rubio and the 257th since 1998 in support of the ISS, Assembly and Maintenance. That'll about wrap it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.